Out of all the tool brands out there, Makita is the engineering company. They're not the best marketing company. They're not the best at anything but engineering. They get this stuff down and get it right. And Makita came out with a new XGT line, which is their 40 volt line of tools. This has an awesome feel, similar to their other 18 volt tools, but it comes in a 18 volt sized 40 volt battery platform. We're gonna put this powerful drill to the test, so stick with us today as we rock this thing out. Today we're gonna go over the Makita GPH-01. This dude is a half inch hammer drill. It has an electric clutch for screwing, hammer mode, and drill mode. All the specs are gonna be below in the description. This is part of a kit, comes with the impact driver and two 2.5 amp hour 40 volt batteries. That kit is GT200D. Now this drill, even though it's 40 volts, realistically feels like it's an 18 volt drill as far as the size. I know I'm, I'm hanging on to a powerful tool. I can feel that. I love the grip here. Uh, forward in reverse is the same as what you'd find on everything. It's nice, smooth, but also tight. And your speed selection up top, very simple, basic, but precision. When you push it, you know it moves. It's not hanging up in between. You can feel the quality here. Same with the rubber overmold. It says brushless in the back. Obviously, Makita is known for their brushless motors. When you switch this guy on its drill mode, speed one is going to be zero to 650 RPM. And what intrigues me and really gets me feeling good about this is speed two is zero to 2600 RPM. So we are 400 or so RPM above a standard battery operated drill. When we switch this over to its driver mode, you'll see this red LED screen show up at the bottom. This is your clutch settings. So on high, there's 21 settings. On low, there is 42. So if we just push and hold this lock button so that green light shows up, we can use this dial to change those numbers. And it's going to increase, we'll go over this, but the cool part is we're in low. We're set on 29. It's given us full speed. If we go down to 17, sounds again like full speed. 12 got a little bit slower, nine even slower, six slower. As we go down, there's three and one. So what's happening with this is it's slowing the speed or the RPM of the drill to give you more precision. You can see, that I'll hold the trigger here. The electric clutch turns off. And then if we want to give it a little bit more, we can just hit that trigger again and it'll give us a little more than a eighth of a turn. Sweet. This is beefy. It's not going to have issue with it getting broken or being in the way. It could be beat on. I love that portion of it. This thing's sweet. Let's go get some drilling done. These days, the lumber we get is real wet. It's full of knots. It's not that great. Um, makes it a little more challenging for some of these drills, but realistically, this guy's got a ton of power. We're gonna start with a one inch spade bit, move up to a one and a half. Just see how it does, mess around with some of the knots, and just get a feel for this guy. We're in drill mode, level two. Obviously a one inch bit is not gonna push this drill at all. Here's an inch and a quarter. Let's go big. Look at that. Move up to an inch and three eighths.
Obviously the bit's getting a little hot there. You can see the smoke. Here's an inch and a half. Right on the side of that knot. That's awesome. It was our first cutout. We had a large chunk of wood leave at the bottom. So I think in this situation, the drill seen a quick change in what it's feeling as far as pressure and turned off the drill for safety's sake. I like that. move up to this two and nine sixteenths inch bore bit might be a little bit much for this guy on high let's give it a try probably shouldn't go right next to the knot let's come out to the end there's gonna be some vibration out there holding this wood let's try it here a lot for a drill on high. Self feed is getting a little that's interesting. So at this point there's a little heat in this, not bad. Let's go to one. Play in this knot area and see what happens. This wet lumber in self feed bits, I don't know if you can see it here, but this, the, the threads on this are just oily, complete. And that does not help it when it wants to grab and go in. It either wants to grab and pull quick or it wants to slide. Pulling out the big guns here, three and five eighths inch bore bit. Let's see what we can do here. We are in speed one. That is fairly common for this bit. As you can see, it's been chewed up, but it gives me a little bit of an idea on how well the chuck works. Let's move over a little bit here and see what happens. And we hit a screw. So that's what's stopping us there. Let's try this hole again. seems like the sustained torque is what's slowing us down and stopping this, but it's still got a ton of power. To be fair to this drill and drill bit, we're just going to get out some two by dimensional lumber. This is normally how we would test this and see how it goes. As you can see, we're at the end of the hole. Very typical, all the other holes drilled here are the same. As soon as we get down there, we'll usually get a cutout. So this drill's got easily the same, if not more power than anything else we've tested with this drill bit. So let's try out hammer mode here, see what happens with a little concrete drilling. a little fast for this bit. If we go on slow, it would probably be mind numbing. 
At the same sense, it seems to work well. It's not super noisy. Uh, probably not the fastest one out there, but at the same point, not bad. So after hammer drilling, I wanted to go out and test that two and nine sixteenths inch bore bit again with some different lumber because it felt weird that I could get through at one point, not get through that lumber at another while in high speed. And while I get that's a big bit in high speed for this, still same thing, you know, just wood makes a big difference in this four by four, even with the knots, uh, I was able to get through it. Now I want to put a disclaimer out there. Um, I actually left it on hammer mode when it was going through there, which I don't know how much that actually affected its drilling mode or anything, but it worked. It was one of those things that with the auxiliary handle on it, uh, I just didn't see that the way I'm hanging on to it. And I did make that error, but man, this thing really ripped through that four by four and it's a blast to use because it's comfortable and it's super fast. This drill driver mode is super interesting to me. So when I'm holding the drill and I look down at it, that's how the numbers show. It's going to show up like that. Uh, you're going to look down. It's not going to be looking to it from the front. I have it unlocked so I can change everything and I'm in low. We're going to just start out on speed one. I got some small screws here. See what happens. And this is softer wood, pretty straightforward. Let's go up to level two. That is perfect. Perfect. If we want to give this one just a little bit more, we can pull the trigger and hold it. It'll give us a little bit more of a turn. And while that's perfect, if we wanted to take it down again, uh, stripped it, but that would be how it would work. Now, if we take this to level two, we're at setting 21, which is the highest. We're gonna go down to 10 here, just for these, see what happens. It's pretty quick for pushing some of this stuff down. Let's go into level five. We are not getting this to stop, which is, or we're just not picking the right level, which is the reality. There's level one. You can see it slowed us down a bit too, which is nice and needed. Two, perfect. So we go with a little bit larger screw. We should bump it up, but let's see what happens. We definitely didn't go as deep. Let's go to level four. For a drill driver, I like the way the clutch is set. I like you know, using this setting down here. I like that it's out of the way. I don't use a drill driver that often for this type of stuff. Impact drivers have taken that away and taken this chore, but I can see in some cases when you were using it and with the precision that you could get here, how this would actually work out well. And it might bring me back to using this in certain circumstances. So there was a lot of pushing this drill driver today in a lot of situations, some of it off camera just to try to figure out what I was feeling. Cause in some cases I felt like uh, the drill was giving me more power. And then in the next case, I wasn't getting the same amount of power and I just went back and forth. And in some cases I actually was testing out this drill on accident after hammer drilling. I left it in the hammer drill mode for multiple different uh, tests that were off cam while they were on camera, but they weren't actually tests that I was going through, uh, through this review. I just wanted to see what was happening and I got some great power there. I got great power um, on the normal drill modes. It's just, it feels like when there is a small amount of heat, and when I use the word heat, I don't mean like heat from some of the red tools we've used. I just mean when I start to feel a little bit of warmth come from this, it feels like the tool might say, okay, I'm backing down just a little. And I don't feel that I'm getting everything out of it. 
although it could be the wood. And that's when I started switching up to like that four by four, which is a little bit softer, but at the same point, man, treated four by four. We ran that two and nine sixteenths inch bit through on high without issues and it rocked it. So there's a lot of differences here between wood that we're seeing and maybe the heat of the tool and what the, the computer system in this tool is doing. But overall, this is a super powerful drill. No matter what the wood shows today, that wood has been shown from a problem from all the drill reviews that we've been doing lately. And this thing rocked it. I would put this up against one of the, or any of the most powerful drills that we've ever gone through and say this one is probably going to beat that. I think that's a great video to come in the future. But one of the big things that really stands out to me on this drill, there's really only one battery here that we're using at this point in time, and that's their 2.5 amp hour. And with that said, through all the testing and everything I did, I really didn't see a lot of battery usage. We dropped, I'd used two different batteries, trying them out just to see what was going to happen. If a battery was a little warm, I wanted to try the cooler battery and see if that made a difference. And in some cases it did, in some cases it didn't. Um, but I only dropped one bar on each battery through all those tests. And I think that's amazing because the first thing you think about when you're using this drill in a battery of this size is, is 2.5 amp hour going to really do it for me? Is it going to give me a day's use of work with this tool or am I going to be constantly flipping batteries through? And there's, that's good news. You're going to be able to put this drill through some of its max paces, do a ton of drilling, and you still have a ton of battery left. And I think that's great. I don't have to go through a five amp hour battery, a six, an eight, a nine, and a 12 and say, okay, this one's too big for the tool. It's just there and it works and it gives me more power than what I would need. And it gives me a very comfortable situation to use the drill in. And that to me is important. I don't have to guess the battery game. I don't have to invest in a ton of different batteries. I have one here that's, that works well and it goes. That's one thing I really like about Makita is that I can pick up that system, including their 18 volt system. They've never really played the game as to saying, I need a, a 12 amp hour battery for this tool. Their game has been, I need more batteries for this tool. And in some ways, I think that works out well. Uh, the rear handle Makita saw that we used, it's been a while ago, uh, just amazing saw and it took two batteries, but it, they were two batteries this size and it rocked it out. So this new 40 volt line, I think is amazing. I think it's going to be something that's going to give another opportunity for a company to push other companies into saying, can I do it with 18 volts or can, do I need to move? Or what is the real thing that's happening? Or is this going to push technology to its next level where we're going to see the difference between like we did NICAD and lithium? Are we going to see the next stage come out as we keep pushing in this pushing in giving clear, solid technical specs that each drill meets is going to help us all out as we continue to see these tools get better and better and better. So if you're looking at getting into this 40 volt program and you're in the US, they're just coming out now. Uh, they're selling out quick in a lot of different places. I'll put some links below. If you're in Canada or some other places, you might have seen this a little bit quicker than we seen it. But at the same point, I think uh, you can back me up in saying that this is one badass tool. So as always, guys, give us a like in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you for your time. Have a great day.